Hello there, Year 11 Methods kids, Mr. Herman here. Unfortunately, I cannot be in class with you guys, so I've made this little video tutorial that's dedicated to exercise 4C. Learning goals for exercise 4C, which is a graph of the square root of x, is to look into graphing properties of what the square root of x entails, and to also look into different types of shifts and modifications of the square root of x when graphed, uh, such as dilations, translations, and inversions or reflections. <clears throat> so the success criteria for this lesson is what you'll be able to do at the end of this lesson, to be able to sketch a graph of the square root of x or in that journal format, and to also be able to determine the reflections or translations of the square root of x graph, and also determine what's considered the end point from these translations. So first things first, uh, there has been a bit of an error when creating this task. Uh, I was meant to clean this up before, but this is actually exercise 4C, not 4B. So go ahead and change this to 4C, the graph of the square root of x. Now in the previous classes, so exercise 4A and 4B, and also from the uh, previous topics uh, prior to this, uh, we've been looking at different uh, graph properties. And we started off with uh, linear and then moved on to quadratic. Um, the previous two exercises, we looked into the rectangular hyperbola and also the truncus. Uh, so that was when we had something look like this, which is the rectangular hyperbola, and the truncus was one over x squared. So this can also be written as x to negative one or x to negative two. Now what we're looking into is the square root of x and graphing this and seeing what different types of properties uh, present themselves. Um, and, and also uh, restrictions. Uh, y equals the square root of x can also be written as x to the power of half. Um, and this is true for any value that's greater than zero or equal to zero. And the reason why we have to set this restriction is because you cannot take the square root of a negative number. So for instance, the square root of negative one. Uh, when you get into specialist maths, and uh, if you decide to take specialist maths, um, we do, um, we do hone into this search property and we call it i. Um, but for the sake of any real values, um, we're gonna make the assumption that this cannot be completed. Um, so for this particular graph here, y equals the square root of x, this corresponds to the upper part of the graph that's shown over here. So this is what it looks like. You start at your origin and it's almost like a, a flipped parabola. Um, it peaks up to around here and as it continues along the x-axis, uh, it goes into a, a nice, almost um, turns it linear into a horizontal line as it keeps going across. Um, it's also uh, known to be considered as the arm of the parabola x is equal to y squared. So if we were to rearrange it and square both sides, we would have x equals to y squared. Um, you can see that if you tilt your head to the right, you can actually see a parabola. Well, one half of it anyways. Um, this is the one arm. The second arm is when y is equal to negative square root of x. <clears throat> so this is a, a reflection among the x axis here. So just like any type of graph, um, you can put in certain x coordinates with into here and it will spit out its corresponding y coordinate. Again, this being called uh, a function and you'll hear me or, uh, or you hear me refer to this as a function laid down the track. Um, so when you spin in zero, one, four, and nine, you will get zero, one, two, and three respectively. So as this x goes up, or increases at a higher rate, uh, the corresponding y values, they actually um, correspond linearly. So that's why there's this peak early here and it tends to just um, taper off into a nice horizontal line because this will keep increasing, the x will keep increasing at a faster rate, um, but the y's will be linear. So the next one would be uh, 16 and then four. So 16 from nine to 16 is a great jump but then from three to four, it's still linear. It's just a um, one unit going across. So let's have a look at this example here. It's example four from your textbook. We're gonna sketch the graph of y is equal to three square root of x plus one, uh, x plus one being the square root, take away six. Now you've already seen the different types of translations uh, occur within the previous um, you know, the previous graphs. Um, so you know there's going to be either a shift left, right, and there's going to be a shift up and down. Uh, there is going to be a, a dilation um, because of that three, but we're not going to hone in too much for that. Uh, the first thing we want to uh, take note 
is where does our translations happen okay so this translation will also determine what the endpoint is um, and it's ironically called endpoint is actually a starting point of where it goes to um, <clears throat> uh, but um, they've coined the term endpoint okay so let's look at the translation uh, we can see here that we'll look at within the square root we have this x plus one when it is associated with the x when it's a plus it goes to the left whatever amount of units this is uh, this is in this case is one uh, if it's a negative or subtraction it goes to the right in this case it's an x plus one so it is a translation one unit to the left so you go ahead and write down one unit left under your example and for the vertical translation um, if it's a minus just to confuse you if it's a minus it goes down if it's a plus it goes up so in this case this is six units down because it is a negative okay so just be careful remember the association when it's associated with the x um, the opposite of what it's indicating occurs so this is one unit left uh, but when it's not associated with the x um, this is um, as normal so six units down so that means our endpoint <coughs> our endpoint uh, this occurs at the coordinate of negative one and six. So when X is equal to negative one, so we're in the negative part of the X axis, um, the corresponding um, the corresponding endpoint for the Y coordinate is at negative six. So negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, which is here. So this there, <clears throat> this is what's considered our endpoint, and then from here, the uh, the graph will taper up. It will hit the y-intercept, and it will keep going, and it will hit the x-intercept as well. We're going to determine where those two points are, and we know how to do this by just substituting x is equal to zero for y-intercept and y is equal to zero for the x-intercept. So let's look for our y-intercept first. So y-intercept. <clears throat> I'm going to let our x equal to zero. So in other words, uh, y is equal to, and we'll just simply substitute zero into the formula. Zero plus one is one. So this will be three times the square root of one minus six. Uh, the square root of one is one, because one times one is equal to one. So this here will just be three times one, which is three. Take away six. So three take away six gives us negative three. So the corresponding x intercept occurs, a uh, y intercept rather, y intercept <coughs> occurs when x is equal to zero, y is equal to negative three. So when x is equal to zero at this point here, y is equal to negative three, which is this point here. So we now got our first, almost like dot to dot, we've got our corresponding ending point. It will taper off, it will hit the uh, y intercept where um, this occurs at this negative 3. Now we're going to look for our x intercept. So we're going to let our y equal to 0. <clears throat> so when y is equal to 0, this will be 3 square root of x plus 1. That's where it is. Uh, minus a 6 is equal to 0. We're going to add 6 to both sides. Um, because we're trying to get x by itself. So when we add six to both sides, we will have this three squared of x plus one is equal to six. And then we'll just go ahead and divide by three because of this times three. I'm gonna do that in one step. So it's safe for me to say that x plus one is equal to two. Because when the six is on the other side, when you divide it by three, six divided by three will yield a two. Um, now, the opposite of square rooting a number um, is squaring a number. So if we square both sides, we end up having x plus 1 is equal to 4. And then we just simply subtract 1 from both sides to give us a 3. So the corresponding <coughs> x-intercept occurs when x is equal to 3. So we'll go across 1, 2, 3, so that there is 3. And there's our other intercept. So this line here will start off at this endpoint, keep going up, cut through the axes, 
And remember, it has the shape that when you turn your head, uh, looks like the um, left hand side or left arm of a parabola. So that's the um, the nature of the curve. We'll label our axes Y and X um, according to that. Um, and that there, as long as you can indicate the points of these uh, X and Y intercepts, uh, that is a, enough inter information um, for this particular graph. And we'll just label this as well. X plus one minus six. At any point, if you want your teacher to pause the video because you want to get these notes down, um, just request that. I'm going to go to the next question now. Okay, so example five, we're going to sketch a graph of y is equal to negative two square root of x minus one plus three. So a lot of information to unpack for this particular graph in order to, to sketch this. The first thing we notice is that there is a negative that is hanging out the front of this graph. So because of that, uh, and looking back at your previous notes, there is a reflection. There is a reflection. So if your normal, um, <clears throat> if your normal graph, if it wasn't uh, reflected, would look like this, this right here, and you can keep a note of that. There's your normal. This reflection will happen among the x axis. So this here will be flipped. So the reflection form of this will have a shape that looks like that. Okay, so you can pretend that there's the x axis. It's being reflected among the x axis. Okay, so there's a reflection on the x axis. Um, it is shifted. Uh, let's look at the shift either it's left or right. This is x minus 1. So it is uh, shifted one unit to the right. So shifted one unit to the right because of the fact that this is a minus. So when it's a minus, it's to the right. And it's also shifted. We're going to check the uh, vertical shift. This is shifted three units up. Three units up because of this plus three that's hanging along at the end. Um, so our end point is going to happen. The end point. So the end point, if it's one unit right, it's at a positive one. And if it's three units up, it's at a positive three. So let's go ahead and find this point. One, two, three, and we've also got one, two, three. So our end point is going to occur here. And because it's following this type of trajectory where it starts here and it goes down, um, you'll notice that there's no y-intercept. There isn't a y-intercept for this case. There's an x-intercept when it goes down because it will keep going down and hit it um, with no y-intercept. So, and you can try to figure this out. Like if you were to try to solve this um, algebraically, when you try to find the y-intercept, um, you let x equal to zero. When you substitute zero into here, you will get the square root of negative one. And this is why the graph doesn't particularly work in this case for real numbers anyways, because we have the square root of negative one. So it's, it, there's no way of actually solving it anyways. So in this case, you'll um, highlight that there is no y-intercept. But there is an x-intercept. There is an x-intercept. And to find this x-intercept, we're just going to let y equal 0. So uh, negative 2 square root of x minus 1 plus 3 is going to equal 0. You just go ahead and solve. For this, you'll um, subtract 3 from both sides and divide by negative 2. You'll end up uh, obtaining, so move this to the side of it, you'll end up obtaining a square root of x minus 1 is equal to 3 over 2. Um, the negative 3 divided by negative 2, the negatives will cancel out just to get 3 over 2. When you square both sides, this will end up being 9 over 4. So remember, you're squaring the 3 and squaring the 2. Um, and then when you're adding um, 1 to both sides, you are effectively adding 9 fourths plus 4 fourths because 1 is also the same as 4 over 4 and the reason why I did that is because I want to make this 1 um, have a common denominator of 4 
that way it's easier to add. So 9 over 4 plus 4 over 4 gives me a 13 over 4 or a 3.25. So that is where our x intercept occurs at 3.25. So if our 4 is here, so 3 and a quarter, this is where our second point is. Now you've got to remember that the, the form of the shape of the actual line because we're dealing with um, to the power of half or square root. So you're just not going to uh, do a dot to dot and do a vertical, not a vertical, uh, a linear um, line here, a straight line, I should say. Uh, it's going to um, go down like that and it's going to hit and we'll just keep going like this. Okay, uh, almost like the, the right hand side of a parabola if you were to tilt your head. Okay, so remember um, that's the format. We've got this endpoint here, which is at one, three, and we've got this x intercept here, uh, which occurs uh, when x, uh, when y is equal to zero, x is equal to uh, 13 over 4. 13 over 4. And zero. Now we're going to be looking into um, what else can we also do in a reflection on? We can actually do a reflection on the y-axis. So before we were looking at, uh, if I roughly sketch it, we had this type of graph that looks like that. You can have a reflection on the x-axis. If there's a negative that's in the front of the square root, um, but if the negative is on the inside of the square root, we actually have a situation where it's reflected along the y-axis. That was y and that was x. Now, a lot, of you, a lot of you are looking at this and thinking, wait, hold on a second. You can't have a square root of a negative number in the inside of this graph. In this case, you can, but if that happens, you're restricting the type of numbers that you can use to substitute into the actual equation itself. So what do I mean by that? Um, if I were to try to find a corresponding y value, if I substitute, say, x is equal to positive 1, this will give me a y is equal to square root of negative positive 1 or negative 1. And you can't solve for this. Uh, if you try to put in 2, 3, 4, in fact, every single positive number, it won't work. But the numbers that you can put, numbers you can put, um, are 0 and then negative 1. Because when you substitute y is equal to negative 1, the negatives um, cancel out to be a positive, and this will give me the square root of negative one, uh, not negative one, positive one, which is one. So negative numbers only work for this because when you substitute a negative number in, it cancels out with the negative that's in there in the first place. So that's why there is a reflection on the y-axis because you can only plug in negative numbers or negative numbers for x. Your corresponding y values will still be positive. In fact, there has to be by definition, um, because you're going to be yielding a positive number uh, every single time, depending on if it's based on this general format. Um, but your negative numbers can only work for this. So all graphs uh, will take on the form of this format here. And I want you to be really, really careful. Um, this here, this format is not always given to you in this format. If there is a negative inside, the square root okay um, and you'll see this in the next example uh, what we have to do to kind of rearrange it so we can force it to look like this format if there is a negative inside this okay so uh, make a side note must be in this format must be in this format um, and the reason the main reason why uh, is because it has to do with um, trying to figure out where our translations happen um, so we'll look into the, the next example and you can see what I mean. Okay, example six, and this will be the last example. We're going to sketch the graph of y is equal to square root of two minus x plus three. So automatically I can see there is a negative in front of this x. So we're going to do with a, uh, a graph that's inverted at, uh, at the y axis or inverted at a, a vertical axis. And I say, uh, vertical because it's not going to just be um, inverted at the y-axis because it is going to be a translation that's going to happen okay um, so again if this is the original okay when there's no negative in front of the x um, 
if that is our vertical, then our particular shape of a is going to look like this. So, uh, there's a little side note here that says that the 2 minus x can also be written as, and should be written as, a square root of minus bracket x minus 2. Now this uh, x minus 2, when you expand this down, it's technically a negative 1 in the front of it, uh, you will uh, return back to this original spot. We want it in this format. Okay. Um, so let's have a look at the um, reflections first. So there's a reflection. Um, on the vertical axis, and you can put in bracket uh, y axis, so you know it belongs to this one. Um, there's a reflection at um, the vertical axis. There is a translation now. This translation, we have this graph here. Uh, um, where this square root of 2 minus x should be written in this format. Now, is this inver uh, not inversion, this translation 2 units to the left or 2 units to the right? And we can get um, uh, many classes of mine get into this debate about whether it is to the left or to the right when they um, first look into this um, certain property. The reason why we take this negative out into this format is because we want within the brackets anyways a positive x okay so let's just ignore this negative here positive x and then this minus two and then we just look at this as a stand alone part and that way we can dictate that this translation occurs um and it is two units this is two units to the right two units to the right So we need to take this negative out in order for us to determine where this translation happens and this will be two units to the right. Okay, so don't get confused because of this negative here. Just take this negative out, have a look at what's in here. If it's minus, it's to the right. And if it's uh, positive, it's to the left, just like normal. Um, and then there's also a, a translation of uh, three units because again of that plus three let's tag along at the end um, again um, we'll put in a uh, endpoint so this endpoint occurs this occurs two units to the right so it's positive two and three units up so positive three so at two three so one two over here one two three over here our endpoint is right there. Two, three. It follows this shape. So when you sketch this, it's going to hit the y, um, y axis. It's going to have a y intercept and it's going to keep going. It doesn't hit the x. Okay, it does not hit the x axis. So there's no x intercept. y-intercepts we'll just let x equals 0 we have a y is equal to and we just simply substitute x equals 0 into the formula um, 2 minus 0 is 2 so square root of 2 plus 3 and if you were to calculate this this is approximately 4.41 Okay, so if we keep going up, 4, 5, 4.41 is effectively near the middle of 4 and 5, around there. So when we go ahead and sketch this, we will have a shape. Looks like that. I'm going to try that again, because that was terrible. There we go. Alright, so we got our end point, 2, 3. And we've got our y intercept of 0, x is equal to 0, y is equal to root 2 plus 3. And that's it, that's the last example that we have to look at.
Um, here is your log sheet, which you should have a copy of. If you don't, you can always go into the compass and grab a copy of this. We're working on exercise 4C, the graph of y equals square root of x, and the relevant questions are 1, 2, and 3, B, E, M. Best of luck, guys. If you don't complete that set, where can you please um, have it completed, uh, including exercise 4A and 4B done? Um, by the time we get back to school next week on Monday. If you have any questions, just shoot me a message on Teams and I'll get back to you um, within the Friday. Best of luck, guys. I'll see you next week on Monday.